What's going on everybody? Welcome to and welcome back to another video. I'm celebrity and fashion photographer Chris Cavanaugh and in today's video we're going to be getting into eight mistakes that beginner photographers make. But before we get into the video I'm going to ask you to do one thing. Hit below and click that subscribe button to become a part of the photo family. So let's get into the video. Mistake number one I've seen so many beginner photographers make. Over editing. Over editing on the saturation, the contrast, the skin editing, we have to understand when we go into focusing on editing and retouching humans, depending on what we're shooting, we have to consider the realistic human aspect of it. Meaning, if the creative direction doesn't necessarily call for it, it doesn't need to be done. Sometimes we go overboard, we want to go in the range of being very dramatic with it, but we have to learn that balance. Balance is everything when it comes to photography. So when you go on your next workflow of retouching, Make sure you do a little something to improve the image, but not too much that it damages the whole thing. Just as important as over editing, mistake number two, there's under editing. We want to make sure when we present our work out to the world, we're putting our best foot forward. Your clients are paying for this service for a reason. Let's give them what they paid for. So we want to make sure we see a little blemish on the face. Let's take it out with the spot heel tool. We have some discoloration with this skin, dodge and burn. A little wrinkle on the shirt, frequency separation, Gaussian blur, or if the color balance is off, let's restore that to the right factor. We want to think, when we present work out to the world, this is our display of our artistry. And we want to make sure we're taking time to actually present it correctly. Coming in at number three, crop factor. Crop factor plays a huge difference within the final deliverable image of our images we present to the world. Whether it's telling a story of a huge wide aware perspective, or something a little bit more cropped in and intimate. It makes the difference. We want to make sure when it comes to cropping, we're leading the eye to where we want it to be. And also, if something's a little bit off-centered, cropping it just a little bit can bring it back into a better perspective. We want to make sure we're being mindful of that because it tells the story and leads the eye to where we want our viewers to go. Mistake number four beginner photographers make, white balance. It's so important to know as a photographer the perfect settings to use in different scenarios you'll be in. Whether you're outdoors and it's sunny, you're outdoors and it's overcast, or you're indoors with two different forms of light going. Knowing how to properly go into your camera and set it to the right dial is so important on the final deliverable image, especially if you're not shooting in RAW. Next thing we want to get into is mistake number five, bad horizons. Listen, we want to make sure using a tripod if you need it, or simply using the indicator within your camera to see if your camera is properly positioned makes an entire difference of the final result. When we go into certain scenarios as photographers shooting, whether we're shooting in sub a subject in front of a wall, we want to make sure that the actual subject and the actual horizon of what the camera is sitting on is correct. Because when you bring it back into the actual software, you will see that the subject is one way and the ground is another way simply because the camera wasn't properly positioned. So if you're not using a tripod or you're just doing it freehand, we just want to make that mindful process to actually pay attention to making sure our horizons are correct. It saves you so much time when you take it back into Photoshop. Coming in at number six, it's the inability to be able to tell a story. I think a lot of the times as photographers, when we just get into it, it's hard to find stylists, hair stylists, makeup artists to be able to put together an editorial or show just diverse looks within our creativity. We'll take one outfit and shoot it in the same locations 50 times. But this is my trick that I use to be able to get if I'm just using one outfit. It's called headshots, half body, full body, environment, and location. You shoot the headshots to tell who the person is. You shoot the half body to give a little bit more perspective of what the person is wearing. The full body to show the full perspective. The location of where they are. And then the accessory is just a little filler in. It's kind of like when you put the, uh, what, what do they call it in video? I guess it's the b-roll it's kind of like when you add the b-roll to the actual photography it gives a little bit of filler space to tell the story about the actual person you're photographing so let's take that advice and apply it coming in at number seven is the inability to understand how important contractual agreements are as a photographer this is your artistry this is the content in the product that you're placing out to the world and you want to make sure that you're able to actually secure the rights to it and know your rights as a photographer when you're exchanging it for service. Going into software is like HoneyBook, a rocket lawyer, subscription-based services that can actually provide you with the fundamentals that are already placed out for you to place your information in and send it to your clients 
whether it's for a mono release, whether it's for a photo release, whether it's for simply just negotiations when it comes to exchange of service as a photographer. We wanna make sure that we protect our assets, our creativity, our artistry. So make sure we understand how important contracts are. Do the research, go to YouTube, go to Google, ask another photographer, but make sure that we are up to date on that information so that we never get in a place that we wish we didn't know. We've arrived to the eighth mistake beginner photographers make, and that is the inability for new photographers to reach out to other photographers that have been doing this longer than you. Whether the quality is better, the time in the industry is longer, and then also the credentials are bigger. Reaching out to photographers at a certain level can be intimidating, I understand that, especially when you're just getting into it, because sometimes we run off with the ideologies and stereotypes that photographers are of a certain caliber can be these mean, vicious people. Yes, that exists. I'm not going to discount that that does, but you have photographers such as myself and other photographers that don't mind sharing a little bit of knowledge that can help you get from point A to Z over time. But within doing that as well, I'll give you a little bit of advice of how to do it. State your name. Hey, my name is. You state what you want from them. You state how you can benefit them and then end off with thank you for your time. It gives somewhat of a little incentive for them to reach back out to you, especially if they're receiving requests to be helped or mentored at a certain volume. Also invest in their education. If they have subscription-based sites that teach on photography and how to accelerate your business from point A to Z. If they have products such as eBooks, Photoshop LUTs, invest in their stuff. That's going to help, help you stick out like a sore, uh, like a sore thumb. And I think whenever you get into doing that process and you you know, know how to actually reach out to someone and talk to them, when you reach out to photographers and come with great intentions and a humble heart, it helps you to be able to be mentored by someone who has been doing this and it will help you take, like I said, your, your whole process to point A to Z over time. I hope these helped you. If you have any other things that you would like to know of mistakes or add to it that mistakes that beginner photographers make, head down in the comment section and place them too. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and follow me over on Instagram at the Chris Kavanaugh. Check out my Patreon page to see more behind the scenes content of the photo shoots that I create and head to my photo store to check out some of my many eBooks and also Photoshop and Lightroom LUTs that will help you take your photography to a whole new level. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you back in the next one. We're out.